Hello, good afternoon, all. Uh, we welcome you on the session. Uh, thank you, participants, uh, for joining us and having this discussion platform on uh, different uh, subjects of the weighing balances, uh, their uh, calibration, selection of weights, uh, reference standard weights, classes and tolerances of weights. Uh, we tried to cover uh, the common topics in the industry, uh, which are uh, being frequently asked among the users or the questions of the queries raised to our company while they buy the weights, while they try to calibrate their weighing balances in the industry. So we, we thought of arranging this webinar to address some of the concerns, uh, some of the queries in the industry, uh, which comes to us on a routine basis. We would be happy to respond to your queries whenever you like these queries to be uh, raised. Uh, if at all uh, we are not able to respond to queries in this session, we'll be happy to respond then afterwards. So we request you to keep on posting your queries. At the end of the session, we'll be responding to your queries or questions, whatever you have. Uh, or uh, in the case where we are not able to respond uh, due to insufficient time, uh, we'll be responding them afterwards. So thank you so much uh, for attending this webinar. We'll be starting this webinar. Uh, shortly, me and my colleague Arun uh, has worked on this presentation and we'll be happy to share the information. So we'll be starting it uh, just now. So we are presenting uh, the core technical webinar on the subject, uh, calibration of weighing balances and selection of weights. Before that, we would like to uh, start with a one common subject. Uh, what is calibration? You, you may have come across different definition of the calibration on the net, uh, on Google, various uh, uh, definitions are available, technical parameters. Uh, I would I would uh, describe this definition in respect of the mass or weighing or mass metrology at this moment. I would try to restrict myself only on the mass metrology. So whatever the definitions we are giving is in general terms and in reference of the mass metrology. Uh, weighing balance, balance calibration is a process used to ensure that the weighing balance or scale is measuring accurately and consistently. When we say accurately and consistently, Consistently means with the, uh, we consider the factor of the repeatability. That weighing balance must be accurate as well as repeatable so that able to produce the same results uh, under different conditions. So calibration is essential for any weighing balance to ensure the reliability and accuracy of the measurement it produces. It involves comparing the output of the weighing balance to the known standards or to the known true value of the masses or the reference weights and adjusting the balance if necessary. Here, here comes the word, if necessary. I mean, adjustment is not the necessary part of the calibration. If required, you can adjust the balance if, if, if there is an error beyond your expected limits. So adjusting the balance if necessary to minimize any deviations from the, unex, from the expected values. Expected values means the values, true values of the weight. So why would like you why we would want the calibration of weight, if at all, if your balance is not calibrated. Ignoring the calibration activity will ultimately turn it into the guesswork and will not be able to measure qualitatively or quantitatively the samples which are being uh, weighed. So the weighing balance calibration is essential for several reasons. Uh, primarily to ensure accuracy, reliability, and the compliance with the quality standards, whatever we have. It, it depends on the industry, metrology or pharmaceutical or healthcare or what, what, whatever the kind of the industry you are into, but to comply the requirements of the quality standards. Let's dwell into the reasons why weighing balance calibration is necessary, along with the case study to illustrate its uh, importance. So first point, point we would like to highlight is the accuracy, assurance on the accuracy. Accuracy, when we say accuracy means is, is closeness to the true value. Uh, and true value is the true certified value of the masses which will be used to calibrate a weighing balances. So first assurance in the accuracy produced by a weighing balance. 
Uh, so calibration in the, ensures that weighing balance provides accurate measurement, uh, which is crucial in various industries, such as pharmaceutical, food processing, manufacturing. Accurate wage me weight measurement are uh, essential for quality control, products, consistency, and regulatory compliance. This is the first part where we co uh, covered accuracy. Second is different uh, compliance in the industries. So there are several comp compliances, usually uh, depends on the industry, but we have covered this uh, uh, webinar on healthcare, pharmaceutical, and meteorological industries. So 17025-2017 is for calibration, meteorological testing, and calibration labs, which are certifying and giving a statement of conformity on the weighing balances or conformity assessment bodies. 9001-2005 is a quality management standard, which is quite popular. We all know that for all manufacturing units, which are complying to the requirements for the QMS. Then USP chapter 41-1251 in pharmaceutical industries and other GMP requirements, other uh, wherever it is required in the uh, pharmaceutical or healthcare industry. So first is the assurance on the accuracy. Second is the requirement for the compliances. A third is the quality control. So we also consider calibration is an integral part of the quality control process. By calibration of weighing balances regularly, organization can detect and correct, correct any deviation from the expected measurements before they impact product quality or safety. So the third point is the quality. Fourth and fifth one. The fourth is process optimization. Calibration of weighing equipment helps optimize manufacturing processes by ensuring that raw material are accurately weighed and formulations are precise. This leads to improve, improved efficiency, reduced waste, and lower production cost. Fourth and the last one is the customer confidence. Calibrated weighing instrument enhances customer confidence in the reliability and consistency of the products. Customers trust that being listed on the product labels accurately reflect the content of the packages, which is especially important in industries like food, retailing, and other industries. So in all, uh, predominantly, we covered four to five points. Assurance in accuracy, strict uh, compliance to the requirements of the standard, quality control, process optimization, and customer confidence. So these are four or five parameters where we consider calibration is important and it is must required. One case study we have uh, represented, which my, which will be presented by my colleague, Mr. Arun. Uh, Arun, please uh, come over and. Good afternoon, all. As uh, we have discussed about the requirement of calibration, why calibration is required. So there are a uh, few, few, few parameters that have been presented that uh, as for quality compliance requirement and for other requirements elevation is uh, important part of our daily operations so now we are going to study a case where what can happen if the guidelines or measures are not being followed so uh, suppose there is a company abc pharmaceutical that is uh, that finds some uh, uh, miss Miss uh, calculations or miss type of uh, product that been had that has been manufactured, and when we go to the uh, case study and for Papa, we found that uh, this happened due to the non calibration of or, or non routine routine calibration of weighing balances. So there are few parameters what can happen and how it can impact. So what can happen? There are three basic points using rate wrong weight selection to calibrate the weighing balance. That is the first point. Second point, maybe uh, maybe person is following the wrong procedure that is not up to the standard. And third third point, maybe the calibration has not been performing at, performed at, at all. So this can lead to the uh, uh, to a uh, uh, to a product where inconsistent inconsistency and inaccuracy of of weighing results can happen. A serious loss of revenue due to wrong weighing or wrong weighing wrong uh, wrong weighing. Quality loss due to inaccurate weighing, overdoses of uh, pro, uh, components or uh, 
under doses of uh, components and customer lo loss due to poor quality if 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 your product is not up to the mark as per the quality standard so eventually it will lost the uh, consumer uh, consumers confidence so suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, we uh, we take a case of uh, revenue loss where a, where a pharmaceutical is using some uh, a very costly product using very costly product on daily basis so suppose a, a weighing is done 10 times in a day and every time in in each weighing there is a loss of 2 mg of uh, substance suppose 2 mg or 1 mg of substance and the weighing has been done 10 times a day so 10 mg for a day and it can leads up to 50 mg for a week for for, for a five working day it can be 50 mg and then it leads to the uh, cycle of one year in few cases so there are very costly materials are there so they can lead leads to the a, a greater revenue loss. That's why we we have to uh, we have to limit our process in a, in a way that there is a very little little loss of these type of uh, substances. So that's why calibration is plays calibration plays the important part in a manufacturing manufacturing organization. So next part is how to elevate the weighing balances. There are some guidelines that has been provided by various organizations. Uh, different different type of organizations have followed different different guidelines. As we discussed earlier, that for uh, for uh, calibration laboratories for ISO 17025 accredited calibration laboratories, there are requirements like uh, OIML R triple one or OIML R seventy six. For balance calibration, there is R triple one, and for weights calibration, there are R seventy six. For lab, for lab itself, there is a guide from Euramet CG eighteen that that is uh, uh, in, a individual guide for calibration of weighing balances. And for pharmaceutical man, pharmaceutical manufacturing, there are guidelines like USP chapter forty one, USP chapter one two five one, and USP chapter one two one zero five eight. So there are different different guidelines. So we have uh, we we will discuss discuss about these guidelines in our uh, in uh, in later slides, and uh, we will present we will present how the calibration of the weighing balance can be done, and how it will be uh, pass or fail in which conditions it will be passed and in which condition it will be failed. So for before discussing the process of calibration, we need we need some uh, pre calibration requirements which has to be maintained otherwise the results may be not as far as per our requirements so there are few points balance plot platform environmental conditions and other things so will you, first is balance platform so platform means the balance at the platform on which balance is resting that must be rigid that must be a vibration free that must be vibration free that must be neat and clean so this is the balance platform requirement. Environmental conditions, uh, weighing balance calibration or uh, weighing balance calibration or performing daily weighing needs a uh, needs a controlled environment. So environment controlled environment means the deviation in that environment condition should be minimum. Uh, suppose is it is for 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 a suppose temperature is twenty three degrees centigrade. So we have to maintain that temperature throughout the day. So deviation is more important than the uh, limit. So it it could be 23, it could be 24, it could be 22. But important thing is that the, the deviation of the temperature throughout the day or throughout the week uh, must be as minimum as possible. Labeling every every each each weighing balance, most of the weighing balances comes with a label indicator. So before 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 weighing general weighing or before Calibration balance must be in level, in level. Power supply must be regulated. Air current, air air, air fluctuations should not be there. Air, air fluctuations must uh, may leads to a very serious uh, error. And magnetic field wing balance wing balances are uh, very sensitive, sensitive for uh, magnetic fields and heat sources. So there there must not be any magnetic source or there should not be any heat source. Uh, uh, besides the balance or nearby the wing balance. 
thermal stabilization thermal stabilization is uh, uh, the uh, temperature difference between the wing valence or wing environment and the measurement so both uh, all three parameters the environment the balance and the measurement should be in in, in, a, in a state of thermal stabilization so temperature of uh, all these uh, all these parameters should be at least same if there is a very big difference between the temperature of wing valence and uh, the measurement suppose you are taking the measure from from outside that that has a temperature of 30 or 50 degree and uh, the calibration and, and the environment uh, temperature of the wing valence which is which is in a control room is 23 degree so that that difference of temperature between balance and uh, measurement can lead to a serious error so there must be a thermal stabilization between lab environment machine and measurement these are the basic three requirements that have to be maintained at every time then we come to the uh, usb guidelines and uh, how calibration should be performed so for mara uh, for uh, pharma manufacturing usb 41 is a primary guideline that should be followed by every manufacturer pharmaceutical manufacturer uh, usb 41 guides for the two tests that should be performed first one is repeatability second one is accuracy so we will discuss both the test one by one. First one is repeatability. Repeatability is uh, repeatability is the ability of a weighing balance to repeat the results when same load is applied again and again. So basically, it's a deviation within the balance on a same load at the same time in same environment conditions by the same person so when a person uh, do the, uh, apply this repeatability test he should use a single weight he will uh, he will apply the weight on the weighing pen again and again and again and the observation will be taken and there should be a minimum difference or minimum devi deviation between the successive observations repeatability testing is performed by weighing its a single test weight at least 10 times at least 10 times not more than not less than 10 times as the guideline itself says not less than 10 times the weight of the test must be within the operating range so you have to select a weight that falls between the operating range of the weighing balance but does not have to be calibrated weights the for repeatability test only for repeatability test the sample mass of the weight does not uh, have great importance but its metrological properties must be better. Metro metrological properties, uh, met better met metrological properties are required. But the calibration certificate or a certified mass value for repeatability test is not uh, necessary. So we will uh, discuss uh, this uh, repeatability test with an example. So suppose we have taken a weight of 100 gram on a 100 gram bank balance we have a we have a balance capacity maximum balance that has a maximum capacity of 100 gram and a display resolution of 0 0.00001 gram or a five five decimal balance so we have done this uh, this repeatability test with the 10 observations and uh, you can see the readings on the screen so uh, then we calculated the standard deviation and the standard deviation is 0 0.00010 gram so there is a basic formula for calculating the uh, uh, either the test is fall or for, uh, fail or pass. So as written in the standard, you can read uh, read repeatability satisfaction two times of the standard deviation of the weight value divided by the desired 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 smallest net weight smallest net weight that the users plan to use on the balance does not exceed 0 0.1 percent. If the standard deviation obtained is less than we will discuss in the second part so first one part as the guideline says standard deviation repeatability is satisfactory if two times of the standard deviation of the weight value divided by the smallest net weight is not is must be less than 0 0.1 percent of the load so here is the example so standard standard deviation is 0 0.00010 gram and the smallest net weight smallest nest weight for the first time should be the, uh, should be uh, given by the manufacturer of the weighing balance normally 
normally for micro and uh, semi micro or ultra micro valences smallest weight is 100 times of the display re resolution so here in our case at the display re resolution is 100 microgram 10 sorry 10 microgram so smallest net weight will be 1 mg so we have calculated the value of 2 two times of standard deviation divided by the smallest net weight that is 1 mg and the that value comes 0 0.020 gram or, and this value is less than 0 0.1 gram that is the uh, maximum permissible error for this load that uh, to satisfy this repeatability test the value of uh, this formula must be less than 0 0.1 gram and our result is 0 0.020 gram that means uh, the test is passed now we will uh, discuss how, about the uh, smallest net width so first time the smallest net width net width will be provided by the manufacturer itself or uh, by the formula e is equal to 100 into 10d or e is equal to 100 into uh, 100d or 10d that is provided by the manufacturer for selecting the operating range repeatability test also uh, tells us the what will be the lower range of our operating range lower weight of our uh, operating range for the weighing balance. So for uh, for the calculation of smallest net weight, standard deviation must be multiplied by the 2000 and that will give the smallest net weight. So user cannot make the op minimum point of operating range below this weight. So for in, the, in, in this example, the smallest net will be 0 0.020 gram. So weighing below 0 0.20 gram on this particular valence in this case is not permitted second test is accuracy test so basically accuracy is the closeness of test result with respect to the true value accuracy test is performed performed using a test weight which is calibrated from an iso 17025 accredited laboratory so in in the case of accuracy test Calibration certificate of the weight is required, whereas in case of repeatability, weight calibration is not mandatory. But for accuracy test, uh, calibration certificate is mandatory. ISO 17025 accredited laboratory and has a valid calibration certificate with its actual mass values and uncertainty reported on it. That, that calibration certificate will be provided by a calibration laboratory that is ISO 17025. Uh, standard uh, created by uh, ISO 17025 standard. Uh, let 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 see an example for a test weight. It is important to qualify metrological uh, requirements other than the maximum permissible error. So error 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 for. So weights weight uh, other than the mass value of the weight. There are uh, there are other metrological requirement that has to be uh, for uh, has to be that that test weight should follow that is such as moc density of the weight shape 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 of the weight and design of the weight as these metro metrological requirements impact the accuracy test maybe the maximum permissible error of the weight may not impact but moc density shape and design these type of metrical metrological requirement can affect the uh, accuracy of this accuracy test uh, for example, let's take an example of 100 gram weight. Uh, for uh, accuracy test, uh, there is a limit of 0.1% to pass the accuracy test. Uh, suppose we have a weight of uh, 100 gram, uh, then the value to pass this accuracy, accuracy test on the weighing balance should be 90, balance display should be 99.92, 100.01 between the 99.1. To, well, sorry, 99.9 to 100.01. So the limit of accuracy test to pass pass the accuracy test is 0.1% of the applied load. For 100 gram weight, the 0.1% will be 0.1 gram means uh, 100 milligram. So the balance display, uh, when we put the weight on the balance, the display should show uh, either 99.9 uh, and maximum limit will be 100.1 the values must fall within this range if the values goes outside this range the accuracy test will be failed and the for formula formula for uh, calculation of uh, formula for calculation of uh, uh, accuracy is uh, certificate value that is uh, the certificate from an iso 
17025 laboratory minus the observed value observed value the value which is which is your balance is showing when the weight is put on the pen weighing pen so these two tests are written in why uh, on us 41 that has to be performed so we have discussed the, these two test tests now the uh, now the important question is how to select the weights or what should be the accuracy class of the weights test that to be used while calibrating the weighing balance <laughs> so there are different different guidelines usb 41 has their own guidelines some guidelines have been uh, recommended by usb 101251 and there are some different guidelines as as ymac r76 which, which is a, a primary guideline for uh, manufacturers of weighing balances and for the calibration laboratory of weighing balances r76 is r76 is oml r76 is primary guideline so we have combined different different guidelines and then we have come to a conclusion that we have uh, entered in a table you can see that level on your screens <laughs> so for a capacity of uh, weighing balance maximum capacity of weighing balance with different different uh, balance resolution the selection of weight depends uh, may, the selection of weights may change so suppose we have uh, we have uh, we have distributed this uh, maximum capacity in few points as 50 gram 100 gram 500 gram 1 kg 5 kg 10 kg and 50 kg then we have classified the uh, balance uh, according to their display resolution so we have started from micro valence that is 0.001 mg then 0.01 uh, semi micro valence then analytical valence and then there are normal valence so suppose we are using a 50 gram balance we have also added a example so here is the calculation as per the guidelines so suppose uh, as usp 31 says <coughs> so everyone who has uh, who is raising your uh, their hands they can post their questions in the comment box we will take all the questions uh, in the last 15 minutes we will try all the questions so all all the question will be answered so in between we have we are taking your questions and your all answer will be given in the last uh, 15 minute time so please post your question in comment box so we were talking about the selection weight selection table so uh, normally usp 41 recommends a criteria of 0.1% so we have selected some weight in the range of 1 mg to 1 kg we have taken 1 mg weight 10 mg weight 100 mg weight 1 gram weight 10 gram weight and 100 gram weight and 1 kg so for a criteria of 0.1% the values for 1 mg the values 0.1% will be 0.001 mg for 10 mg it will be 0.01 mg for 100 mg it will be 0.1 mg for 1 gram it will be 0.001 mg and mp mp require as as, as the guideline suggest usp 41 suggest we we will come back to the usp 41 here we can see a test weight is suitable if it has a mass between 5% and 100% of the valence capacity the test weights maximum permissible error or alternatively its calibration uncertainty should shall be not more than 1/3 of the applied test limit of the accuracy accuracy test so in this in this slide we have calculated that uh, limit that is required to select a weight so we have done the just one third of this value so for 1 mg it is 003 mg for 10 mg it is 003 g for 100 mg it is 0.03 mg and then for 1 g it is 0.3 and for 10 g it is 3 mg 30 mg and 300 mg and so on so as per the requirement from this table we have to select the weight so there is a guideline that uh, oml r triple one that uh, uh, says the what are the maximum permissible errors for weights we have also attached that table here so suppose for 1 mg we have required a accuracy of 0.003 mg now we have to look in this table which class has that accuracy so the highest accurate weight in this table this is this table is from oml 
so highest accuracy weight in this table is 1 mg of even glass the first column first column first row so zero that has a error of uh, maximum maximum permissible error of 0 0.003 and its uncertainty can match that the value which is in this table that is 003 so for a 1 mg weight the, the uh, recommended accuracy class is even we we will take second example of 10 mg so for 10 mg the required required maximum permissible error is 3 mg and in this table we can see for 10 mg in even class the error is 003 mg so 3 and uh, even class for 10 mg is recommended now we can we, we will take the example for a higher capacity weight uh, suppose 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 a uh, 1 gram weight so for 1 gram the required error should be, should be less than 0.3 mg and in this table in this table we can see for 1 gram at f2 class the limit is, uh, the error is 0.3 so a f2 class weight of 1 gram can be suitable for uh, for selection so you can uh, you can uh, use this table to select any weight within the within the operating range of your weighing balance there are uh, there are some points when when the capacity is high suppose for 1 kg weight so 1 kg weight, kg weight required error is 300 mg and from the table we can say we can see uh, for 1 kg weight maximum error in m1 class is 50 mg so there is m2 accuracy class also which has a uh, error of uh, 100 mg so, but because of the metrological requirement we at masse precise would not recommend using any weight lesser than the M1 accuracy class because of the maybe it can qualify according to the uh, maximum purpose error table, but due to the metrological requirement, we will not uh, we will not we will not recommend using lower accuracy class other than M1. So here is the uh, end of our slide. We have uh, also covered uh, these these topics in detail on our website. So you can simply go to the blog section of our website. There you can find uh, the detailed blog, or you can request the blogs if if required. So now now we will uh, go to the question and answer round, and we we will try to answer all our questions which we got in the messages. Uh, some of the questions we are taking and will jointly respond uh, to some of the questions raised by our uh, uh, participants. Uh, uh, one participant has asked, steel weights used in the pharmaceutical industries are of which class? Uh, assist weights can be of uh, any class ranging from M1 to E1. Uh, however, the classes M2 and M3 are made of cast iron. But uh, yes, assist weights uh, from the category two of uh, 304 to 316 can be made in the classes of accuracy of M1 to E1, E1 being the highest accuracy class and M1 being the lesser accuracy class. However, M2 and M3 are made of the cast iron. Uh, uh, we have also uh, a blog written, uh, published on the subject, how to differentiate calibration weights among the several classes. You can visit our website and uh, refer how you can differentiate the, uh, the different classes of the weights. Uh, then we are, screen is not visible raised by someone. I think we have made the, Screen visible. Uh, Mr. Nagesh Shukla uh, has asked one question. What should be the standard weight for repeatability? Uh, sir, uh, for repeatability, there is absolutely no, uh, no question of the tolerance or the OIML class of the weight. Only thing the weight should fall between the operating range of your weighing balances. And the same weight should be uh, kept on the weighing balances for the multiple observations. For the semi micro analytical balance, for example, you have a balance up to 220 grams, the 100 gram uh, weight 
uh, for the repeatability would be adequate enough and uh, there is uh, no requirement if you can go to the usp chapter uh, 41 uh, there is no requirement of the tolerance on the for the repeatability test uh, he is asking for uh, this smtw statement 100 times of the display resolution that is that is given in that that hundred time has hundred times of display resolution is given in the table of YML R76. You can uh, download that YML R76 uh, document from their website, and you can find the recommendation there. Normally, the minimum weight uh, must be uh, given by the manufacturer, but if manufacturer is not uh, uh, provided you that, you can uh, uh, use that table to find out which uh, what should be the minimum weight for your valence uh one one participant has asked for fertilizer lab oiml is applicable yes true why we should use f class instead of e class uh you should not use f class or e class based on the i mean uh, the perception but yes f class and e class as we have shown in the table uh, there are the places where you require only E class to calibrate your weighing balances, and there are some places where you require only F class to calibrate your weighing balances. We request you to go through the kindly uh, uh, the matrix in our presentation. We will share you after that. Uh, we will share you the matrix or the table which you can refer to calibrate the weighing balances with respect to the classes of the weights. Write a mail to us. We will be sending this PPT or this document to you, sir. Whomsoever is interested to get, get this PPT, we will be sharing. Uh, one uh, participant has asked, is standard weights have validity? All standard weights have validity. Uh, you can refer OIML R111 for the calibration and their validity r triple one is a is a principal document which will guide you and to understand help you uh, to decide the validity of the weights uh, once a participant has asked which guidelines for the smallest net weight uh, please paste link here you you want minimum sensitivity weight uh, to be identified or you want uh, the requirement of the smallest weight uh, to be used while calibrations the european pharmacopoeia 2.1.7 highlights this point i would again uh, repeat european pharmacopoeia 217 highlight this point uh, you can refer that Uh, sure, uh, many of the participants are asking this PPT on the mail. We'll be happy to share. You can also refer our blogs on the website. Uh, one uh, participant has asked which classes of which to be used for water quality labs. It it's, uh, it's totally depends on the kind of the weighing balance you use and not on the kind of the lab you have. So I request you to, to just have a resolution and the range of the weighing balances to identify the class of the weights. We have just shown in our matrix which resolution and range uh, should be uh, the matrix shows which weights are used for the uh, class uh, respective classes of the resolution. Any more questions, we'll be happy to answer. Uh, over to you, Sun, please. Uh, sir, there is uh, two more questions to be answered of Mr. Sudhir Gupta and uh, uh, Sushil Naidu, sir. Yes, sir. And Rupendra Singh also had made a question, sir. Uh, Mr. Rupendra Singh has asked, should we need to check the entire operation range of the balance to verify for the accuracy test? No. Uh, 
Uh, sir, sir, I would I would say uh, if you are performing a full scale calibration, yes, you need to cover the entire operating range. But yes, if you are uh, verifying the balance on the routine basis, uh, you need not to cover the complete operating range of the balance. For the verification test, the covering a complete linearity or establishing a com complete linearity over the range is not necessary. But yes, for the calibration in a year or while, you you can consider the complete range of the operation. Uh, Susil sir has asked, I mean, validity means uh, not the not with the respect to calibration, it with, with respect to the in strength. So there is no validity in with respect to the strength until the weights are maintaining their maximum per base mill error and their meteorological requirements. They can be used. There is no such validity for the uh, physical uh, physical aspect of the weights. Mr. Sudhir Gupta has asked why only 100 gram weight is selectable for calculation minimum operative. What happened if you use 10 gram or 200 gram? 100 gram is just for. 100 gram is just for the illustration, sir. You yes, you can use 10 gram or 200 gram for your uh, uh, calculation or, or or your weighing balance uh, establishing the repeatability test. But you have to balance. maintain that 0.1 percent of that accuracy. If yes, you are using 200 gram weight, then you have to maintain that. Uh, 0.1 percent of 200 gram or if you are using that 10 gram bit then you have to maintain that 0.1 percent of 10 gram uh, your acceptance limits would be changing as you change the nominal value of the weight sir however you can do so for the illustration purpose we use the 100 gram uh, any more questions which are yet uh one team has asked just a moment what is the difference between what is the difference between balance and a comparator why comparator is better uh, as as looks from the team they are into the meteorological field and they want to establish a difference between a comparator and the balance for a comparator you cannot measure the complete range of the operation where the balance you can measure the complete range of the operation comparator is defined for the meteorological purpose uh, it it will be able to weigh only for the nominal value of the weight for which it is designed where is the balance you can measure all the range in the sample or instrument range am i correct for yeah. calibration level please uh, comparator comparator is only for the calibration cal preferred. preferred but not for the users who are uh, routinely using the weighing samples on the weighing span and what is the sensitivity of the test balance one uh, uh, we covered accuracy and the repeatability test and we didn't cover the sensitivity and the eccentricity test on the balance in this presentation as it was taking much time however uh, we would be happy to respond on this sensitivity test and the repeatability test uh, or eccentricity test sensitivity uh, or sensitivity sensitivity so we have we have our blog. Uh, you can visit our blog section on our website. So we where where we have covered uh, this test of like uh, uh, repeatability test and like uh, uh, hysteresis test. We have covered this test point by point there. Uh, for sensitivity test, uh, sensitivity sensitivity in our concern is that uh, we load the weighing balance with a maximum load maximum weight. And then we try to change the uh, display, uh, display, uh, scale yes. interval of the weights using a sensitivity weight. So for a sensitivity weight, uh, first thing is sensitivity weight, weight must be less than the scale interval. And secondly, it can only be used after load, loading the balance or uh, up to the full length. Suppose we are using a 200 gram balance and 200 gram and 1 mg balance. So we will load, first we load, uh, load the balance with a 200 gram weight and then we will at small weights until the uh, last digit of the wing balance change and at at and at a value where the last display digit change that is the sensitivity of that big wing, wing balance uh, mr naidu has asked the in, inbuilt spirit level for the wing balance available for leveling need to be calibrated in routine if yes then what is the method so the in, inbuilt spirit level cannot come out for the purpose uh, to be kept on the surface uh, plate uh, uh, for establishing a meteorological traceability or the calibration 
So it is better to use it only for the verification purpose. If you want to even check cross verify the spread level, which is inbuilt on the uh, weighing balance, you can use an external spirit level to verify the performance of that uh, internal internally built spirit level. The jewelry manufacturing application, which class mostly used, the most common among the jewelry manufacturing is class F1. F1 is the standard which are being used by the precious metal manufacturers or the suppliers. So, so class one, F1 is the common standard or OML standard. Any more questions? Uh... Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, Saurabh sir and Arun sir. Uh, I think uh, now it's going to be uh, end of our session. And I would also very thankful to our all of attendees and, uh, and, and helping us to make it a success uh, session and uh, now uh, we will also try to keep another session in upcoming days uh, if uh, if you have any queries or the questions uh, or, or regarding like ppt then please post us on the given mail id we will revert back to you and uh, and thank you so much and we have also given a uh, link for the form uh, where you can post your uh, requirements of uh, weights uh, for the upcoming days uh, like which class and, vi uh, and which capacity of weights you require so you can fill that form and we will uh, cater you in a best way uh, thank you everyone uh, thank you so much